start here. And um, I might have to turn on my other lights because actually it's not too bad on this camera. Let me see what it's like on the other camera. Um, a little bit of delay, so thank you for your patience. Uh, I just got back from doing a hike and took a quick shower. Uh, tonight we're going to talk about the science of being well, the science of being healthy and abundant in uh, your life, um, dealing with uh, wellness. So let me just go ahead and put on the live on Facebook, and it looks like my youngest wants to say goodnight. Hi. I went upstairs. Uh huh. And you know how you had that window open this morning? Yes. Yes, there was a lot of crickets. So I was, I was like, what's making all those sounds? Uh -huh. And then and I looked, picked them out, and I saw the window still open. Yes, I know. I left it open because it needed the, the room needed to be aired, aired out. It's getting stuffy. And we're going to talk about that too. Um, today and uh, the science of being well. So it has a lot to do with your surroundings and what you take in. Um, so, oh, <laughs> I typed in the totally wrong thing. I was looking at something totally different while I was talking. Anyhow, give me one second and uh, we'll get started in about one minute here. I recommend if you have a journal or something to write down um, some notes, go ahead and grab that. Every single night I, I come on here and do a free session at uh, 9 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Like I said, thank you for your patience. I know it is a little bit later tonight. Um, like I said, I literally just got back and took a really quick shower so I could be here with you guys. So uh, it looks like the lighting's perfect tonight, even though I have been uh, putting on lights, but it looks like uh, everything is better here, so that's good. Uh, let's see. All right, so we're getting ready to start here, guys. Okay, this one is a little bit weird camera because it does have a reflection. <laughs> like, I try to get. Oh, I don't want to drop it. Okay, maybe that's better. So okay, <laughs> I've got to move a bit. Um, all right, there we go. Let's try that. And I think it's because it's on really low light, but I'm going to update the camera on this, on the other live here. Um, I was pulling out some equipment today, uh, but, um, I don't have it set it up just yet because I'm missing a couple cords. All right, we're getting ready to get started. Welcome guys. My name is Amina K. Thorfinn. You can, um, go to my website, aminak.com to get success coaching, uh, wellness, everything to do with um, the well-being and mental health uh, based around your mind um, and, and life and in business. So I have things like affirmations there. I have a couple articles that I wrote. Um, it's a pretty new site, so there's not too much there, but it, there is stuff there. There's free resources and things that you can share. Um, they, I do have a uh, share um, uh, links there and stuff like that and um, so my mic is about to die so <laughs> if it does then I'll go ahead and just take it off but I know it, it has um, increased the quality okay so let me let me run that through that again so my name is Amina K. Thornton you can find out some more about success and mindset and your um, life and your business at my site aminak.com. Uh, I come on here every single night at nine o'clock Eastern uh, Standard Time, and uh, tonight we're going to be talking about the science of being well. And just the basic overview on this: it's basically a way you train your mind, a way you change the way you think. Um, and being well and being healthy. Uh, this is not to cure anything. This is not to um, say that you know you don't need a special service or anything like that. This is a, more of a way of thinking and using natural principles of nature to uh, facilitate your healing and facilitate your mental well-being 
And uh, I'll tell you a little bit about me around this subject because I think it's very helpful if I do. And uh, I hope that it'll give you a little bit of insight uh, of what is possible. Okay. So that's where we'll start, and then we're going to go through um, a couple different subjects in this matter. So this session is going to be about, I would say, about 30 minutes. So if you have 30 minutes, uh, please stick around and get the full benefit of this course. Now, if for some reason you cannot stay 30 minutes, uh, go and follow me on YouTube. So I'm going to... Um, I'm going to let you know basically that channel, it's bit.ly, it's B-I-T dot L-Y, uh, that little slash thing, Amina with a capital A, so it's A capital, right, M-E-N-A, and then a capital Y for YouTube, right, Y-O-U, and then tube is lowercase T-U-B-E, all one, um, so that is bit.ly, um, and then the slash, capital Amina, capital YouTube, but the T is lowercase. And that's the easiest way to get to it right now. I do have a direct link that is getting set up, but it, I just checked it and it's not set up just quite yet. If you're watching this on YouTube, amazing, awesome. Thank you for being a follower. Um, I am truly grateful for you being here and uh, learning from me. And uh, feel free to share um, any content that I have available for free. Okay, and that's the same with all, all my social media too. Uh, I do produce this, uh, like I said, for you guys every single night uh, for you to share and to learn. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, like I said, I'm going to be talking about tonight uh, the science of being well, which is based around the principles about how you think and natural law natural uh, occurrences in nature. And um, with that said, I'm going to start with a little story. It's going to be super short on me and my health and wellness. Okay, so um, just to get you know, you're familiar, um, I am a mother of three. Um, my last child I had about 10 years ago. Uh, so I have um, a 15-year-old, a 12-year-old, and a 10-year-old. And uh, Having them all um, in my early 20s, I, I gained a lot of weight, a lot of weight. My max weight was actually around 223, and that was being pregnant, but um, it was still a lot of weight to carry, a lot of weight to have. And um, with that, uh, you know, the, of course, you, you uh, worry about your health a lot when you are in that state. Uh, you don't know um, what's, what you're doing wrong. You don't know um, how better you can, you know, take care of yourself, at least in my case, because I wasn't eating junk food and I was eating all the so-called like good food for you, all the stuff that they tell you you should eat at a certain time. Um, I was very health conscious. In fact, I was eating organic. Uh, I was getting my milk from the farmer, and it was raw, like, unprocessed. Um, and I still, like, I even did, like, some walks. Like, they always told you, like, walk twice a week, right? And you'll get healthy. Um, eat some apples, you know, make sure you have plenty of fruit. And um, I still, uh, you know, gained a lot of weight. I was, ended up being 220. And I felt miserable. And I, I felt um, that I couldn't uh, perform the way I wanted to. Uh, of course, like I said, I was pregnant at that time, but even after I had my first daughter, this was 15 years ago, um, you know, I still ended up being around 200 pounds. I was like 190 something. Um, so, you know, just to get back in shape and, and uh, you know, in a good well-being, it took a lot of work. And I was very dedicated to lose the weight. So I ended up um, getting down to... Uh, 125 uh, during, you know, just really strict calorie counting, keeping a journal every single day, and uh, running, running uh, three miles um, twice a day. So <laughs> it took a while to get there, so don't feel bad <laughs> because 
barely, I could barely even walk a mile when I started. Uh, so it was breaking, it was literally breaking a mile up um, over the course of a day and then working up to three miles uh, twice a day. So, you know, it was a lot of work, but I, I managed. Um, like I said, and then uh, fast forward, I had two more kids, gained a lot of weight, lost a lot of weight. Um, my last child uh, I had, uh, like I said, is now 10. And um, and it took me eight years to get back into a healthy weight. I started at 186 after I had her, um, and that was uh, 10 years ago. And over the last three years, I finally said enough's enough. I don't know why I'm waiting so long. I don't know what I'm waiting for. This doesn't make any sense. I know how to lose the weight. I know how to keep it off. And um, she's my final child, right? She, she was it. Uh, so um, I ended up getting back into my routine that I developed. And uh, I am now glad to say I am 135. So I went to from the max weight, 220 to 135 over the last 15 years. Uh, of course, up and down um, weight variations from then. Okay, so I know I told you that story. It's, you know, been a process. And um, so science, the science of being well and being healthy is definitely something I can relate to in this. And not only that, the whole time I um, was dealing with the weight, um, mentally I felt healthy because I was eating healthy food. I was still exercising, you know, the two, three times a week, you know, walking, you know, um, up to five miles a day. Uh, so I felt healthy, like there was a healthy person in me. I just didn't know how to develop that person. Um, with that said, I never was sick. I never had an ailment. There was many years I didn't have health insurance because being a business owner since I was 19, uh, the health insurance cost is ridiculous. <laughs> so it was more than my mortgage. Um, so, you know, there's many years that uh, didn't have health care. Um, so, you know, I my whole mindset was always uh, based around, I have to stay healthy. I am healthy. I know how to be healthy. And like I said, the reason why I'm telling you this story is because it is the exact principle that um, I've been learning in this area of um, mindset study. And uh, it really resonates with me uh, looking back and over my life and these principles that I have basically learned without knowing about it. Um, and we're going to go over that tonight. So I hope that helps you out um, wherever you're starting on your weight loss journey, wherever you're starting on your wellness journey. Um, I still to this day don't take any medications for anything. Um, I take some supplements because they, they do improve um, my well-being. Um, you know, but that is it. I don't take med over-the-counter medication for anything. I don't, uh, I'm not on any like subscriptions or anything like that. And I had three C-sections. Um, I've had tubes in my ears. Uh, so things like that. So I'm telling you this to tell, to let you know that you can go from being really overweight, uh, to being healthy. And it is really all in your mind. And, um, like I said, it takes time and dedication. Like I told you. It's taken me many years to develop these disciplines without even knowing it. And um, I'm going to tell you today exactly what they are so you don't have to figure it out yourself. Um, so if, if I read this, uh, this, you know, this area of study years ago, it would have put me on this path much sooner. And that's why I want to teach you guys this tonight. Okay. So the principle of being well, the science of being well, the law of nature, right? Um, we're going to first start out just saying that you have to have faith. You have to have faith in this principle. And what I mean with that, you have to have the belief 
that um, anything in this world is possible, even if you don't know the exact way it's working, right? You don't know, you don't have the exact um, A to B pinpoint on, you know, if I do this, this is going to happen. Um, just like faith, you know, you believe in something um, so great that it makes it happen. It develops um, without you knowing the exact steps. Um, and this is nature's law, right? So this is just like the air we breathe. We can't see it, but we know it's there. We can feel it, right? Um, I want you to have a faith so great um, that it is undying in this area because if you really want to be well, this is the quickest way to get there. Um, so uh, I like how Wallace D. Waddles puts this. I really like his simplicity in talking about this. So I'm going to actually, you know, put in some of his messaging throughout uh, this talk tonight, throughout this free course. So um, what he likes to say before he starts any of his talks or any of his books, right? Um, he always said, and now this was many years ago. His books were written in the early 1900s. Um, he said, uh, you know, you have to think of it like this. The nature is all around us. It's within us. It's what we breathe. It's what we are. It's what the stuff around us is. And now I'm putting this in my own words, but this is basically what um, his principles are, right? So uh, this, this stuff, this substance, makes up everything we touch, we feel, we see, we do. It is just penetrates every fiber of us and every fiber of nature. And whatever we think, uh, whatever we see, whatever we interact with affects something in some way. And uh, that is why when you have faith in something, when you uh, feel it, when you say it to yourself, when you believe it so much, it affects the nature, the um, substance around you in such a way it um, brings you closer to the spiritual world, the, 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 um, the natural world, the universe in general. Like I said, if you have faith, you can rely, you can think of it um, like God, right? You can think of it like uh, Mother Nature. You are closer to Mother Nature um, with faith. You are closer uh, to that way of thinking um, when you realize how close you are because you are made of the same stuff everything else is made of. Um, so with that said... If you have a basic faith and you can believe truly that, you know, you are healthy and happy and beautiful and gorgeous and uh, you are, um, then you are already so much more further in your health and wellness journey than you can possibly even know. Um, so, like, in my own story, when I was telling you when I, you know, was overweight but yet I still felt healthy because I already, uh, I just naturally knew every time I was thinking about like, oh my God, you know, I feel terrible. Um, every time that popped into my head, right, we always like to tell ourselves negative stuff. I always reversed it in my head and just like, no, I'm healthy. I don't have any ailments. I don't take medicine. I never go to the doctor. You know, I am healthy. I might be overweight, but I am healthy. And so I was stuck, in a way, I was stuck in the mindset that I'm overweight and um, that I'll always be overweight. And then on the other side, I always told myself that I was healthy and that nothing affects me, that I am, um, you know, well and, you know, and um, I can do anything I ever want. So I was actually telling myself two stories. I was telling myself that, hey, you know, um, I'm never, I never get sick, you know, uh, I never need medicine, um, I don't believe in medicine, uh, and that was keeping me well all these years, even today, like I said, never took medicine, I still don't go to the doctor, <laughs> and, um, you know, so, you know, obviously it's been working for me, um, and then on the other side, whenever I said I was overweight, I was, you know, sad, I, I didn't, you know, like the way I looked, I would further, like, 
gain weight back. Like I would lose a couple pounds and then I'd gain it back um, because I felt like I wasn't losing fast enough. Um, I wasn't confident in what I was doing. And every time I started down that path, then I would gain the weight back and then it would be a cycle, right? So this is where your mind has to shift and you have to keep telling yourself uh, when you get in that mindset that I am well, I am healthy, I am, a, I am um, uh, abundant in life, I feel great. And every time, every single time that you start to think negatively about how you look or how you feel, to say, I look beautiful, I am, I am um, getting stronger um, by the moment, you know. So you have to live in it now and keep telling yourself, um, you know, the greatest things that you could tell yourself about how you look, how you feel, how well you are. Even if you're not there yet, you got to start training your subconscious to seriously take in the information so it can build that mental image of you. And the more you can look in the mirror and picture it in your head that you are slim, that you are skinny, that you are well, that you don't need medication, then over time, your body is going to be rebuilt into this mental image that you think. Like I said, it does take time and it does take discipline, but it is a way of thinking that um, is going to basically change you just by thinking of it. And there is, like I said, many um, laws and principles that go behind this, uh, especially if you study uh, philosophy, if you study um, higher science, um, I'll put in here also that you actually lose more weight in breathing than you do a lose weight in waste. If, you know, when you actually, you know, relieve yourself of it. So you actually, I'm going to say that again. There are studies, you can look them up, that when you breathe, you lose more weight than when you go to the bathroom. <laughs> so... You can look those up. So like I said, natural law. The, and there's also studies, uh, you can look these up too, on the people that think about exercise. Like seriously, if I sit here and for like the next hour, I actually think about working out. I think about different positions. I move my muscles. I think about uh, going on hikes. Like seriously, like live in it then I would lose more weight and gain more muscle just by thinking about it. So like I said, many studies on this. Um, you can check them out um, later. Uh, but like I said, it's the belief in you that sets the motion. Uh, so you are what you think, period. All right, so we talked about the faith. We talked about the natural law a lot. Um, now I'm going to go into some uh, things about the way you eat and also, um, hunger and appetite. So, uh, we are, when we pretty much grow up, there's always, um, in our mind, we're set with these rules, these, these, uh, tendencies that, um, up that has been passed down to us, right? That we have to eat uh, breakfast, we have to eat lunch, that we have to eat dinner, right? Those are like the staples. And your breakfasts, if you're American, we're always taught that, you know, um, do we have to have this American breakfast. We have to have this big, huge breakfast because it's going to fulfill us throughout the day. In fact, it's the most important meal of the day, right? We always hear it's totally false. So totally, totally false. And you're going to have to, uh, it's going to take time to get over this because, you know, um, it's taken many, many years to build this ideology, this, this way of thinking that it's become a deeply ingrained habit in our subconscious. And in fact, it sets us up um, for automatically thinking we need food all during the day. And... Um, I'll go through a couple of uh, principles. Why? Just give me one second because I'm going to take a sip of my drink here. Okay. If you haven't heard, I got Mexican hot chocolate. It's frozen. It's not hot, but it's frozen. 
Yeah, if you haven't seen my ketone drinks, uh, check them out on my website, aminak.com. You can look it up under uh, products. I have a four minute video there. It only takes four minutes to watch and gets you all the information. Okay, thank you. Feel much better. Okay, so uh, totally false. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, totally false. You don't need breakfast, lunch, and dinner. <laughs> all right, let's start with breakfast. So, breakfast, um, you don't eat at all, like, at all. In fact, many, many um, people that I know that work out, like, in fitness and things like that, um, that are very fit in general, don't eat breakfast. So, it is a common thing for them to skip. And um, digging into the reasoning behind that and getting more into the ideology behind it with these natural laws... You know, I, it really makes sense why not. Um, and this is, you know, I'm going to cover this here. So the reason why you don't eat breakfast is because the day before you ate food, right? So you ate food and you most naturally didn't go to bed starving, like true hunger starving. Like I need food. I cannot function. Usually you don't go to bed like that. I would hope not. So, you know, the next, as you process that food that you ingest the whole day before, because it takes a while to process food. And if you eat meat, it takes even longer. It takes three to five days. So your body's processing this material you gave it, right? And if you don't chew your food like really, really well, then it also takes a while to digest all this food. So your food, of course, is used throughout your body as nutrients to keep you going. Um, if you go to bed, right, and you ate that day, then you shouldn't need food first thing in the morning because your body still um, is absorbing all that food you ingested the day before. So does that make sense? So you, you ate, and then you went to bed, so it gave your body plenty of time to absorb the food and get the nutrients, and you didn't work out all night. You were asleep, so there was no um, functioning going on other than, you know, RAM, which does use energy, but it's not as much as what you do during the day. So you shouldn't be waking up starving, and I mean starving like truly hungry, um, with a need to eat to function. So you shouldn't need breakfast at all. Um, the, in fact, the next meal of the day is lunch, right? So we usually eat lunch around noon. That seems to be the general. Um, I usually actually eat lunch or anywhere from 11 o'clock to one, depending on what I did in the morning. And um, I've already been practicing this mindset, um, not knowingly, <laughs> but uh, where the fact is that, you know, I just don't feel hungry. I don't want to eat. You know, I want to, um, you know, don't feel like I have to eat at a certain time. My kids don't even eat at a certain time. So I I've gotten to the, the habit of just letting us all eat when we feel hungry and uh, learning more on this, you know, like I said, of this mindset, um, it totally makes sense. So if you eat uh, when you're hungry, and usually if you skip breakfast, you'll be hungry anywhere from 11 to 1 o'clock, and then you eat till you're full. You don't overeat, you don't want to be bloated, you don't want to feel stuffed, so you eat till your body says it's got enough nutrients. And most of the time when you are truly hungry, you're not gonna grab junk food ever. At least in my own case, I never grab junk food when I am truly hungry. I always look for like lots of vegetables. I look for a protein of some type. I look for, you know, food that's going to fill me up. And I don't even have to think about it. I'm like, you know what? This looks good. I'm just going to put this in a pan. I'm going to fry it up. And that's what I'm going to eat. And uh, time and time again, every time I think about the times I've done that, I felt 
satisfied and I never get bloated anymore. In fact, the last time I got bloated is when I ate some chipotle just like uh, two weeks ago uh, because I was buying it for my kids and I ate it and I felt totally stuffed. And I was like, you know, that feeling, I haven't had it in so long, at least like six to eight months, that it just felt, it felt terrible. Oh, like, I never want to feel like that again. So, and the food wasn't that great because I've been home cooking a lot lately. So I was like, you know what? I'm good. I don't want that feeling. I don't want to feel like that. I want to actually make my food um, because I know what's in it. I know how it tastes. And um, I, I will freely let go of eating out right now and just focus on more home-cooked, dense, rich foods and eating when I'm hungry and eating until I'm full. So I highly recommend you guys, if you struggle with food, um, make sure you just eat, uh, you know, skip breakfast, eat lunch. If you're hungry, you don't eat lunch if you're not hungry. Okay, period. Don't eat lunch. And we're going to go into this in the next uh, little chat we have here. So dinner, same thing. So eat um, when you're hungry around a decent time. I mean, I imagine you're not going to be eating right before you go to bed. But if you do, that's fine. If you're seriously not hungry until like 8 o'clock at night, eat until you're full. So don't, if you fill your plate up, and um, you seriously only take two bites and you're full, then you stop, <laughs> okay? You chew your food also, um, so your digestion, um, you know, can pick it up and use it right away, so it doesn't have to break it down, and you don't get that indigestion because you didn't break down the food enough for your body to take in the nutrients right away. So you want to make sure you're chewing, too. So you chew, don't talk, don't um, engage in anything. Make sure you fully enjoy the taste of your food to get the nutrients out of it that your body can break down instantly. So you know you're not overeating in that aspect either. So if you don't um, eat dinner, that's totally fine. So if you just ate lunch and it filled you up and you got enough nutrients of it, uh, out of it, your body will tell you um, you're not hungry. And most of the time, people confuse hunger with thirst. So make sure you are definitely taking in a lot of water. And I mean water. <laughs> so if you, for some reason, your water is terrible or you need to add something to it, add some fresh fruits. Um, do like, uh, you know, some cucumbers, add some limes or lemons and let them sit in a container of water and just strain them. So that will flavor your water and also give you some nutrients. Um, so that will help you uh, curve um, any type of possible hunger that you might have, but most likely it is thirst because a lot of people get those two confused. All right. And it's, it's, it's very common. All right, so um, I'm going to talk about hunger and appetite now. And then let me see what I got here. Yeah, we're going to talk about hunger and ap appetite. And then we're going to talk about breathing and sleep. Okay, so we got three more areas we're going to talk about. We're going a little over today. So, um, hunger and appetite. So we already went over... Uh, you don't have to eat breakfast, eat lunch. If you're hungry, um, don't eat dinner unless you're hungry, right? And then the cycle continues. Okay. And if you just like to munch on little bits of food and you feel totally stuffed, that's cool too. You don't have to have a whole meal. I mean, seriously, there's many a days that I eat some nuts and then like an hour later I go grab a scoop of nut butter, and then like a couple hours later, I get some olives, <laughs> you know, see what I'm saying? So eat until you're full, but make sure it's food you love. Um, and even if that's like you feel like you want a piece of cake, you know, and that's your meal, totally cool. Don't keep eating. Don't, don't feel like you're missing out on something. If your body um, says that it's full, stop eating. So, but I highly recommend you cut out your processed sugars because it will totally change the way you taste 
like real food and your real food is going to become more sweeter um, over about, uh, I would say about a three week period. Uh, you get new taste buds every 12 days, so your body will adjust pretty quickly. Okay, so hunger and appetite. So just like I said about your meals, your breakfast, lunch, and dinner, your, your appetite will tell you um, that you just want stuff, right? You, you're just, that's, a, that's the habit. That's the like, you know, what tastes good? What would I want to eat? You know, that's that sweets, that's that, um, that junk food, that, that crunchy stuff, you know, that, that uh, you know, smooth taste. You are just craving the sensation. Just think of it like a drug. Think of it like um, alcohol or another substance that you take in that gives you pleasure. So you're actually getting pleasure. You're not getting the nutrients. It's not a hunger. It's a, it's a um, it's an appetite. You know, uh, you you're you're indulging and in just eating to get the pleasure out of eating, not to actually get vitamins and nutrients to live and thrive. So you got to be really aware of what the difference between hunger and appetite is. Like I said, if you eat real food, um, not processed, it's going to take time to rebuild the way you eat and your habits. So it's okay. Um, like I said, I recommend that you start, um, try to skip breakfast and go straight to lunch. Um, you know, to, you know, be your step one, but however you want to do it, uh, you need to break the habit of having a set time for meals. And this is with kids too. I have three kids. Uh, they're all homeschooled. They've always been homeschooled. They know how to make food. Uh, in fact, sometimes we trade off uh, different things uh, to, um, you know, have a, a meal ready for all of us, but we all get together and eat when we're hungry or, um, you know, we, we just take separate meals and that's totally fine, right? So you don't want to force another person to eat with you if they're not hungry. Um, if you want to make them a meal and put it away, that's totally okay. I do that. My kids don't fuss. They know if they're not hungry when I'm hungry, they don't have to eat. So, as I said, this is a discipline, this is a new way of thinking, um, how you treat your food and how you treat your body. All right, so don't eat unless you're hungry. Okay, now we're gonna talk about um, breathing and sleep, and then I'll do like a quick little review. All right, so tonight we are talking about the um, science of being well and well-being, dealing with the mind and natural law. So breathing is very important. Like I said before, about uh, 10 minutes ago, uh, that you know, breathing actually gets rid of more waste out of your body than going to the bathroom. I said there is studies on this. The most recent one, I believe, was done in the UK. You can um, look at that uh, medical report. Uh, so, as I said, that's just what, from what I remember off the top of my head when I was reading it. Uh, so, like I said, breathing is important, one, because uh, whatever you breathe in is giving you nutrients. So you are ingesting food stuff, right? Through the air, through the scents that you smell. And um, it's very important that you have a well-ventilated area, that you live in a clean environment because everything that you smell uh, that is uh, around you that you know, could irritate your senses is gonna affect you as um, not only in your blood, but also on a cell level. And um, you don't want those toxins in you, especially from breathing, something that 
you know, all of us can, um, can relate to, we can all like change that by opening the window. We can let in fresh air from, you know, cleaning our house. We can all be more disciplined in that and keeping our uh, area clean and, um, and well ventilated. So, you know, we shouldn't have anything around in our environment that is an irritant because we are taking that in. We are making that a part of us on a cellular and, and level and um, taking in those nutrients just by breathing and, you know, giving them to our blood. Uh, so, like I said, be mindful of what you are breathing, especially in your bedroom. And I'm going to say this, there's many a years, uh, in years past in my 20s, I didn't have good ventilation in my last house in my bedroom, and I had what was called an ionic breeze. Do you remember those things? They had commercials all the time on TV about them. I had, um, I think, three of them. I had one in every one of my children's room. And for many years, we did use that to ventilate so the air, and it does work. It's a very good machine. Um, but if you have natural circulation, if you have windows, definitely open them up at night. Even if it's cold, you want to have some fresh air in your room that's going to get um, rid of any odors, rid of any uh, build up, and also provide you a clean, fresh source of oxygen. Uh, so you, you're not going to be um, breathing air that's been reused, breathing air that is stagnant. You want to just think of it like water. Will you drink uh, water that's been sitting in a cup for many days? Or would you like a fresh source of water? Same thing with your air. I know it's a thing that's most often overlooked, and that's why I'm putting it in here. Um, it's easy to overlook air because we can't see it. We don't uh, really think of it as a food source, um, but it is a way that we are ingesting, right? We are ingesting it by breathing it. So make sure that when you sleep, especially, that you have fresh air in your room. You can even have a fan to circulate the air, but make sure you do have fresh air and ventilation um, to get rid of any uh, stagnant air or any type of um, odors or things like that. Uh, so with that said, I also want to say here that, um, let's see, with your breathing, uh, let me think what I was going to say. I just lost it. I'm going to take a sip of my drink and try to come up with it because I'm, I'm thirsty. I think I said it already. Okay, so you have to keep the air fresh when you sleep. Oh, because when you sleep, you actually take in more air. You actually take in more air when you sleep. So make sure that uh, your area is definitely clean. Um, clean sheets, you know, uh, well ventilated, um, fresh air. So air out your room. All right. So, um... We are at 40 minutes. Thank you for tuning in. If you uh, have to go for any reason, catch the video on YouTube. If you're watching on YouTube, amazing. Thank you for being a subscriber. And you can feel free to share any of my free videos here um, with anybody you want. All right. And same with you guys on um, these lives. You're totally uh, cool with uh, tagging me, sharing uh, any of these videos. Okay. So we talked about breathing, and now we're going to talk about sleep. So we talked about, let's see, so far, what did we talk about? We talked about the natural law, right, and how that works. And I told you a little bit of my story and went through the way I was thinking about my mindset, right, on, you know, I was one telling myself that I was always overweight, but on the other hand, I was telling myself that I'm totally well and I don't need medicine and stuff. So I was always well, and I still am, um, but yet I was always telling myself that, you know, I look terrible and I'm overweight and, you know, all this bad stuff. So 
Um, I benefited in one way, but it took me many years to overcome the other one. So this is why it makes a difference by shifting the way you think about your health and well-being. All right, and then we talked about um, the faith behind this principle and why it works. And uh, then we talked about when to eat. And then we talked about hunger and appetite. And then we talked about breathing. And uh, we talked about, um, we didn't talk about sleep, but I did pretty much go through sleep because sleep was, uh, I put with breathing. So when you, when you sleep, like I said, you have to have ventilation because you're gonna take in more air as you sleep than, um, that, than you would naturally use during the day. All right, so I think that's about everything. Let's see, let me just run through my list here and just uh, see what else I have here. Okay, and I'm gonna put a little bit more faith-based stuff in this because there is one point I didn't cover um, that I'm looking here on my notes that I do wanna put in here, especially if you do believe in, in God or the spirit or natural energy or laws of attraction, this would relate to you in that um, mindset. And um, what I wanna say here is that, think of it like this, um, everything around you uh, is has this natural energy in it. It has this natural energy to be well, to be clean, to be abundant, to be well on that higher plane, right? In that subconscious, we always want to be better. We always want to be well. And if you think of it more in the mind that you know, the reasoning behind why we want to be well is because we are made of the same stuff as the spiritual, the, the you know, our gods, um, our God, you know, whatever you want to relate to, to nature all around us. We want to be abundant because um, that is nature's law. That is the way we thrive. And uh, with that said, you are made to be well. You are made to overcome difficulties. You are made to be able to think the way you want to uh, benefit from that. And with that, you know, the more healthy you are, the more life can live within you um, to be renewed, uh, to give back. So it is nature's um, best interest to make you better just by you wanting to be better. Because the more better you can make yourself, the more you can give back um, abundance to nature to make other things better. And um, with that said, you know, it does matter what you tell yourself because that's going to not only affect you, it's going to affect everybody around you, everybody you see, everybody you interact with. Um, it's going to improve your mind. It's going to improve your relationships. It's going to improve everything. So just take this little, um, this little ending here, this little, um, thing in a nutshell that I'm going to throw out here for you. So make sure I'm going to give you some principles. Okay. Write these down, rewatch this video, you know, make sure that you're watching it until you have this deep faith in you. Cause I want you to realize you can control everything just by changing you and the way you think. Um, so take this down. All right. I'm going to give you, I'll give you three principles. Okay. Three really super important ones to start this journey of, uh, thinking, um, on how to be and live better, right? To put you on the higher plane, to get you to uh, whatever you're trying to, um, you know, overcome in your health and wellness. If that's to get off of medicine, if that's to lose some weight, if that's just to have more energy to live more fulfilled, you know, I'm going to give you three key points uh, about um, what I talked about here. And like I said, if you haven't seen the whole video that I've done, 
make sure you go back and rewatch it. If you have seen this video, but you quite don't believe yet, rewatch the video, start journaling, write down every single day that you are well, that everything about you is, is great and wonderful, and just keep doing that. Do it for at least 30 days, and then just see how you start to change. Okay, but that wasn't one of your principles. That's just a bonus. <laughs> All right. Um, so one, one, super important. You've got to start telling yourself, just like I was saying, that you are well. Every single time that you want to say, I feel fat, I look ugly, you know, my skin's not perfect, my hair is drab, whatever you tell yourself um, mentally that is a negative, I want you to switch that around and just say things like, uh, oh, another one, like I hear a lot, uh, my side hurts, my back hurts, whatever, something hurts, right? Um, you never want to mask it, for one. Your body is made to repair itself. It has cells to repair, let them do their work. Um, so you want to, uh, you know, relate to the fact that one, yes, you are healing, that you are overcoming something. So you want to be able to so say, say in the negative, you want to relate more to the positive. You want to um, relate to, I, uh, I, feel, uh, I feel abundance. You know, I feel grateful that, you know, I get, I heal fast. Um, anything that will shift whatever you're thinking into the positive you want to do. So make sure that you instantly change, right when you catch yourself, you're like, oh my God, I look terrible in this. You know, be like, you know, uh, I feel amazing. I feel bright. You know, I feel... You know, whatever that is. And then if you change, that's fine. Just, you know, like, don't make it a big deal. You know, just take it off, change it to something else, and just say, hey, look, I look gorgeous in this. Um, don't think about it. Seriously, don't think about it. Give yourself a compliment. Compliment anything and shift your mind away from anything that is pulling in the negativity. You're training your subconscious. So you're training your subconscious to be better. All right, two is that I want you to make sure you're not eating unless you are truly hungry and not um, with appetite, not with uh, that pleasure in eating, not with the pleasure of the taste, not the taste, but the, um, the texture or the, I, I like to use the word drug here, the drug that's inducing in the food and like i said it is much like a drug it is uh stuff that is put in the food that makes it uh more alluring to your taste buds but it's just like uh, smoking and drinking heavily it is a pleasure it's not to uh, give you nutrients to live to thrive on so make sure that the second one so the first one was talk abundantly about yourself, that you're amazing and uh, healthy and wise and gorgeous and you have abs and your arms are like built and uh, you have full uh, natural gorgeous hair, things like that. Um, the second one, like I said, would be on um, not eating unless you're starving, right? Like not starving, but you know, when you actually have uh, natural hunger. And the third one I really, really, really want you to do is make sure that you're breathing. <laughs> and I know I'm laughing about this because it is so funny um, to me in a way because there's so many practices I use around breath in meditation, to working out, to um, just, you know, relaxing. And it has become such a involuntary habit of mine that um, I think it's kind of funny because it is so important. And just all these years of just doing it because it felt good was because uh, also it made me feel um, more alive and more you know, a healthy, which it was really making me healthy. 
uh, because I was re releasing that energy, releasing the toxins and taking in um, those natural energies. So uh, breathing is super important. Um, and like I said, especially when you're sleeping, make sure you're having fresh air, make sure that you have a clean space to uh, live in. And um, like I said, you can probably even still get those ionic breezes. I don't know. I don't have one anymore. That was many years ago. Open up a window, turn on a fan, make sure you clean out your air filters in your house. A lot of people um, don't do this. Buy the expensive air filters for your house. You want to filter your air and uh, make sure that you have clean air because you're taking in whatever you breathe as food as nutrition to be um, put through your blood and in your cells. So, okay, so I'm gonna run through the three real fast. One, make sure that, um, let's, let's not eat, what were we talking about? Oh, you're telling yourself positive affirmations. We'll put it like that, positive affirmations. You can get affirmations on my website too, aminak.com. So aminak.com has one that is a 30-day mindset challenge. Take that, that has plenty of wellness in it. So definitely go print that out um, as a good starting point where you don't have to do any research. It's free, go get it on my website, aminak.com. Uh, two, um, your breath, uh, excuse me, what you eat. So make sure you're eating only when you're hungry, period. So, uh, number three is make sure you get uh, plenty of uh, fresh air and sleep. Um, so that, that's actually like, I didn't, there's a couple of little things I did not put in here tonight that, um, I'm going to have to probably cover in another video. And that is why breathing, sleep, and, um, let's see, breathing, sleep. And there's a third one. I can't think of it right now. Breathing, sleep, it's something else. I can't think of it, but I'll have to make another video on that. So definitely check on that. And also what you eat. I didn't cover what you should be eating. I covered when you should be eating, but not what you should be eating. And that will be a whole other video. Um, and like I said, with the uh, other one that I can't think of the third one right now. But I'll make another video again on this principle. And um, so definitely check that out on YouTube if you miss it. Um, it'll probably be over the next few days. So definitely check it out. Uh, we'll have it on there. And if you're watching this on YouTube, amazing, awesome. You know, thank you for subscribing and watching this video and improving your mental health uh, just by changing the way you think. All right, guys, take care. My name is Amina K. Thornton. You can find more affirmations, resources, courses on aminak.com. I wish you all an abundant life and health and wellness, as well as in, in success and in life and business. Uh, take care, and I'll see you again tomorrow, 9 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Good night.